If you're thinking about starting an SMMA or you already run an agency, but you haven't hit 10K per month, then stop whatever the f you are doing and watch this video right now. After scaling my own agency to seven figures and helping over a hundred agency owners scale to $100,000 per month, I can tell you this one thing. 99% of SMMAs struggle to land their very first client. And it's all because they don't do this one thing. But the crazy part is doing this only takes five minutes minutes. In today's video, I'm going to break down an untapped outreach strategy that will allow you to stand out and start to land clients that are begging you to work with them. And the best part, you can do this even if you're a complete beginner, even if you have zero social proof, and you don't have to do any guarantees. This is one of the most powerful ways to start landing clients in 2023, and it only takes five minutes minutes. Everyone says that SMA is saturated, so this video is going to show you how to stand out and land your first five clients. With that in mind, sit back, relax, take out a pen and paper, and let's dive in. One of the Agency Lab members yesterday posted in the group asking for help, and I'm really grateful they did that uh, just because it's going to be a good learning opportunity. And uh, two things. So they said, hey, Joel, um, let me actually pull up a Google Doc here. Let me know if you guys can see my screen. Can you guys see my screen? Cool. Yep. They said, hey, Joel, I have been at this for a while and it's not working. And I asked them, well, what have you done? Right. And they sent 5,000 cold emails and they sent 200 DMs. And then also I asked them to send me their scripts. And it was the exact copy and paste uh, script from my Cairo agency a while back. And uh, it was um, an opening Instagram DM script, which I um, haven't used before. So here's a few things, guys. Let me just put this in perspective. We were sending 500 cold emails per day, which is 15,000 a month. And we were closing one to two clients from that every month. So. I was sending 15,000 emails per month and I was closing. This is also when I was good at sales now. We had client results. I had a team in place. Omir was dialing all the positive replies like crazy. We were closing one to two clients from this much volume. And this is back then. So it's kind of like inflation. Over time, it's going to have to go up a little bit. And here's the thing to keep in mind. Uh, sending 5,000 cold emails and saying, hey, the business doesn't work. I, I would say it's you just don't have enough data yet. Like it's too soon to tell, right? Like, and we did this for months. So it also scaled up. Um, and I think also the thing to keep in mind here is everyone thinks, oh, I set up cold email. I'm going to build a 10K a month agency. And if you actually look at the most successful agency owners in this program, they are growing through referrals and paid ads. This is the main thing. If you look at 90% of the people, 90% of the agencies that hit 100K a month were referrals and ads, 90%. So the reason for that is because it allows you to scale your outreach way, way more efficiently. And sending 200 DMs, that should be per day. This should be per day minimum. And it honestly, you know, I had a, I had a student a while back in the med spa niche. They ended up scaling to millions of dollars and selling the agency and had a big seven figure exit. And he figured out a way to DM every med spa in the United States every day. So he sent a message to every med spa every day and he just follow up. He had a whole system in place to send like Eight to 10, this was back then when there was not as many med spas, but he would send, and he focused on a specific service within med spa. So he would send out about 5,000 DMs per day. And he would literally make a new video or a, like, a, it's almost like you guys see my emails and, you know, I show a social proof or a, a valuable YouTube video. And he would literally just follow up and DM them valuable content, social proof, uh, just videos that he makes, his selfie style. And he had a system in place to literally reach 5,000 med spas every single day. And if you guys are going to go the volume, uh, if you guys are, let, let me actually teach you guys a quick lesson. The more you copy and the less 
personalized. So the more you copy, the more automated and the less personalized, the more volume that you need. Let me say that again. The more you copy. So let's say you use the same script that I used five years ago or three years ago or whatever, the last six months ago, the more of a, a the, the less personalized it is, the more volume that you're going to need. Whereas if you set, for example, let's say that you guys take, write a handwritten letter to 10 business owners and add a little lumpy mail and you come up with a unique uh, object to include in that mail that's personalized to them. Don't you think that's going to stand out more? It's going to stand out way more because it's much more personalized. So it's like a, a good lesson for you is the more automated and copy and paste you go, the more volume you'll need. The more personalized, high touch, where you really take the time for every outreach, the less volume you'll have to do. Does that make sense? So when this person in the group came to me yesterday, which again, I'm really happy that they they posted. Like if you guys ever need help, ask for help. And this is a good lesson for you guys. So I wanted to share it. If you guys are going to copy and paste the script, you're going to have to go way more volume. Like I'm thinking, send that, send this, send an email out to every chiropractor in the nation once a day or send out 200 per day minimum, right? And the only way to get away from that, if you're like, Joel, I just want to send out 10 DMs a day, you're going to have to go hyper personalized. Maybe you make a personalized video. Maybe you come up with a unique strategy to reach that person. You actually get to know who they are, what they care about, and include that in your outreach. You're not going to stand out if you just go copy and paste, not personalized. And you're only reaching you know, 5,000 people total. And I think the other key thing here is maybe the expectations are off, guys. If you're going to do cold outreach, it's going to require you to match the level of people that paid ads reaches. So if paid ads reaches 5,000 people a day, you're going to need to match that with your cold outreach if you want to get the same result. And this is why so many people pivot to paid ads as they're making money, as they're scaling, because they realize, holy shit, I can just get way more done. I can get in front of way more people. So with cold outreach, guys, if you're going to do cold outreach, and especially if you're going to just do the automated way where you have a VA sending it or you have instantly sending it out, you're going to have to do way more volume. And that brings me to the last lesson I want to share. You guys, if you're if you're going to do cold outreach or really anything, but let's just focus on cold outreach. If you're going to do automated copy and paste cold outreach, you will have to innovate. You will have to innovate. Like if you guys are just copying and pasting the scripts from five years ago, it's not going to work. I'm telling you right now, you're going to get diminishing returns. So it's not that cold email doesn't work. It's that you're not thinking creatively. Like this is the winners of SMMA and really any business model will be the ones that figure out how to take something that's already proven, which is the value of going into a business like this. It's proven to work. You don't have to recreate the wheel. There's clear demand for marketing and there always will be. As long as business are growing and capitalism is a thing, people will need marketing. So that solves a lot of problems for you guys. You don't have to go build a new tech company that you're not sure if it's going to hit. You know people need marketing. Now it's like, how do you stand out? How do you stand out? Maybe you change the script. Maybe you lead with value as opposed to going right to an offer. Maybe you actually do a personalized strategy for every single point of outreach that you that you make. But you guys are going to have to innovate a little bit. Maybe you change the offer instead of offering ads you say, hey, I'm going to get you Google reviews for free. And then we'll talk about ads. Or you say, hey, let me install a virtual assistant in your business You can, uh, for 30 days risk-free. for And it's your foot in the door offer. Like there's many different ways for you guys to innovate. You could literally innovate the script. You could innovate the offer. You could innovate how personalized the messages. You could innovate the order of... Uh, how do I say this in an easier, simpler way? Innovate how you reach out. So for example, instead of pitching right away, instead of pitching right away, maybe you offer to do a Google review campaign for free as your foot in the door offer and just say, hey, I'm just doing this to give back. And you're not asking for any money. So it's like you just change your positioning. So maybe maybe that's in a, a more accurate way to, to say it. Any, in it. Innovate how you position yourself. So don't position yourself as an agency. Position yourself as, hey, I just want to help you out. 
I've got this great Google review campaign. I noticed you didn't have a lot of Google reviews. I'm more than happy to help you for free. You don't have to pay me anything. Just want to get my name out there, build my portfolio. And if you like the work that we do for you, just make me a testimonial video. So you can innovate how you position yourself. You can innovate how personalized the message is. You can innovate the offer. For example, I already gave you a few. Instead of offering the uh, ads, you offer a VA. Instead of offering ads, you offer AI SEO. Instead of offering ads, you offer, um, let's see, I'm trying to think of, look, I made a video a while back where I was like, don't build an AI agency because I just don't think that businesses are going to pay you over and over for that. But here's an innovation. You could say, hey, here's an AI chatbot and that's your foot in the door. You're still doing SMMA on the back end. You could say, hey, you know, I'd love to make you guys an AI chatbot that answers all of your customer service uh, inquiries that come in. They could literally text anyone that texts your number, answer all of your questions. I could even install a chatbot in your website that's there live anytime that someone goes to the website so that we can really capture them. And I'm going to do it um, at no cost just to get my name out there, just to help. And you're still an agency because you're going to sell them on ads afterwards. That's how you get them to keep paying you the retainer. But what you're doing is you're leading with something innovative. You're leading with something different. You're not saying, hey, do you want more patience? You're saying, hey, I'd love to install this chatbot for you. And I'm just giving you guys ideas, right? Um, you could innovate the script. Let me see if I can find that script that I made. Uh, um, man, I made some interesting scripts that I don't remember where they were. Let me see if I can find them. You know what? I'm going to literally just show you guys the one that I wrote the other day, because that'll be easier. Hi, name. I noticed you. I noticed on your Google My Business listing that you didn't have that many reviews. I'd be happy to give you access to our Google review software to help you out at no cost, just as a way to give back and build up my marketing agency portfolio. So you're still an agency, right? Reply back if you're interested and I can help get this set up for you. Or, hi, name. I noticed on your website you didn't have a um, chatbot. Um, I'd be happy to install to install one of our AI chatbots for you at no cost um, on your website. It will be able to do all of the customer support questions and get people scheduled. Just as a way to give back and build up my marketing agency portfolio, reply back if you're interested. You could say, so this is a brand new script. I made this from scratch. It doesn't exist. No one, no one else has it because I made it from scratch. But the point is I had to innovate a little bit. I had to think hey, how do you take this idea of marketing agencies and do it a little bit differently than everyone else? Here, let's make the, the, my traditional script and let's make it over again. So remember that the, the old, let me see if I can actually find it. Uh, all right, let me see. And we can get creative with it, right? I just pulled this up from like one of my very old uh, cold emails. It's like, hey, Dr. John, Let's say we said, remember we talked about personalize, personalizing personalizing the emails. I noticed on your website, you won the Dentist of the Year Award in 2022. So I know you are the perfect fit for this. And yes, this is a cold email. It will only take about 15 more seconds to read though. So let's see, grab this right here. By the way, I'm not saying this is going to work or not, but the point is I'm testing new shit. I'm literally writing it from scratch so you guys can see what it looks like. So it's like, hey, Dr. John, I noticed on your website you won the Year Award in 2022. So personalized thing right there. So I know you're the perfect fit for this. And yes, it's a cold email. It will only take about 15 more seconds though to read. So, so don't pull my teeth out. Um, here's my offer to you. I will send you 10 dental implant appointments for free. Um, you only pay me when the uh, when the patients sign up for an actual implant treatment. There's no hidden setup fee. There's no um, retainers ever. This paper. Okay, so this is a different email from. Have you guys ever seen this email? Yes or no? Have you guys ever seen that email? That exact email. Never. Never. Damn. 
Right. Just now. Cool. I wrote it from, I literally was writing it from scratch. So it's like, that's going to stand out compared to every other email that's ever been sent ever. And it's kind of the same, right? So, hey, Dr. John, I noticed on your website, you won the Dentist of the Year Award in 2022. So I know you're the perfect for this. And yes, it's a cold email. It will only take about 15 more seconds though to read. So don't pull my teeth out. You could do something else here just to like get a reaction, stand out. Um, you could even be like, hi, Dr. John, warning. This is a cold email. Um, all I ask is for 15 seconds. And if you never want to see me again, just reply, stop. I will be sad though. So you could literally, all right, here's another email. You just cut out the other intro. Hi, doc, like this is different. It's unique. Hi, Dr. John, warning. This is a cold email. I'll ask for, it's for 15 seconds. And if you never want to see my face again, my face again, just reply, stop. And I will disappear forever. And then maybe you put that, uh, let me put this stuff from the other email there. Cool. Like imagine getting that email. Hi, Dr. John, warning. And then maybe the subject line is warning. <laughs> <laughs> it might flop completely guys, but I'm just trying to innovate here. This is a cold email. All I ask is for 15 seconds of your time. And if you never want to see my face again, just reply, stop and I'll disappear forever. That's such a good opener. Here's my offer to you. I'll send you 10 dental implant appointments for free. You'll only pay me when the patient set up for an actual implant treatment. There's no hidden setup fee. There's no retainers ever. Just pay me, pay for my results. And I'm even happy to throw in our famous Google review campaign that generates 50 new Google reviews in less than a week from existing patients. And no, we're not like any other agency. Think about it. Have you ever, you know, maybe I would reword this a little bit, but whatever, you guys get the point. And no, we're not like any other agency. Think about it. Have you ever gotten a cold email like this? Reply yes if you're interested. Now, here's another opener that I just came up with. Hey, Dr. John, um, you can either take the blue pill and be stuck forever or take the red pill and change your practice patients than you've ever imagined it's possible. I'm just coming up with a shit on, on, on the fly right now. But it's like, most of you guys don't even take 10 minutes to ask yourself, how can I be different? And you just copy and paste expecting the same results as everyone else. So it's like, hey, hi, Dr. John, you've got two options. You can either take the blue pill and be stuck forever or take the red pill and flood your practice with more implant patients than you've ever imagined is possible. If you decided to take the, to the blue pill, then you can just reply, stop, and I'll never email you again. But if you are curious about the red pill, here's what you will get. You could even put a freaking uh, GIF of like the matrix. So it's like, have you guys ever seen that cold email? Hi, Dr. John, you've got two options. Number one, you can either take the blue pill and be stuck forever or take the red pill and flood your practice with more implant patients than you've ever imagined is possible. If you decide to take, if you decide to take the blue pill, then you can just reply, stop, and I'll never email you again. And if you take the red pill, here's what you're going to get. And no, we're not like any other agency. Think about it. Have you ever gotten a cold email like this? Reply yes if you're interested. Okay, you could do uh, something like this. Hi, Dr. John. $100 or 10 new dental implant patients. So this is a cold email. If you finish reading it and you hate me and want $100, reply back and I will send it over for wasting your time. But if you just, ooh, what's an even better angle? Hmm. If you finish reading it and you hate me $100 for wasting your time, but if you, this one needs a little bit of work, but you guys get the point. Imagine if you get this cold email, hi, Dr. John, $100 or 10 new dental implant patients. Let's play a game. And yes, this is a cold email. If you get to the end and hate what I've got to offer and feel like I wasted your time, just reply back and I'll send over $100 in cash. The only caveat, you have to hear me out. So here's my offer to you. I'll send you 10 new dental implant patients for free. You only pay me when the patient sign up for an actual implant treatment. There's no hidden setup fee. There's no retainers ever. Just pay me for my results. And I'm happy to throw in our famous Google review campaign that generates 50 new Google reviews in less than a week from your existing patients. Um, reply yes if you're interested. Reply 100 if you want the money and I'll send over next steps. Now let's say that they say 100. Now you're getting all these dentists to say 100. Say, look, here's what I'm gonna do for you. I'll hop on, I'll run this campaign, if it doesn't work, I'll send you the hundred. And if they're pissed, whatever. At that point, it's like, you're getting way more engagement. You're standing out, you're different. And look guys, all this might completely fail. But the point is, I'm just thinking differently. I'm innovating. I'm asking, how can I beat the cold email that Joel wrote three years ago? And I think that there's three problems with anyone that's been stuck with their, uh, 
agency and they just haven't done a lot. Um, there's three fundamental problems. Number one, you have to do more volume if you're going to do cold outreach, especially the less, the more copy and paste it is. And the more, the more copy and paste it is, the more automated, like a VA is sending it out or instantly sending it out, you're going to need way more volume. Like again, when I was sending out 15,000 per month and I had a sales team, I had someone calling the positive replies. I had clients, I had case studies. We were only closing one to two clients a month from cold email. So just put that into perspective. Uh, number two, you guys need to find a way to innovate either the script like I just showed you guys, you can innovate the offer instead of offering ads. You can offer a VA instead of offering ads. You can offer AICO instead of offering ads. You can offer literally uh, content. You could offer other things on the front end. You know, you could also just change what you offer first to get someone in the door. Like, think about it. Most of you guys are here, but I didn't say the, the, the first time we ever, you guys found out about Joel Kaplan, you guys didn't say, okay, I'm signing up. You guys found out about all these different things that I offered you. I said, Hey, here's my free course. Here's my YouTube. Here's my scripts. Here's my, this, here's my, that I'm offering all these things to essentially get our relationship started. So you guys can change. You guys can change what you offer on the front end. You're still an agency. You guys can innovate how personalized the messages take. That's where you can win on quality versus quantity by just making it more personalized. And then you can also innovate how you position yourself. Instead of asking for money right away, maybe you offer other things for free just to add value, which is what we were going to talk about today, by the way. We were going to talk about how to get your foot in the door by adding value. But I guess we've talked about a lot more. So if you're like, Joel, it's not working. You know, I used your scripts. It didn't work. This is what I would encourage you to do. Either up the volume or let's see, up the volume, change the script, change the offer, make it more personalized, change how you position yourself, or just do other prospecting strategies that are more scalable. Otherwise, you're always going to be stuck. Someone put subject line, your kid is doing drugs, Dr. Sam. What a genius subject line. I'm not, it might not work, but it's like, that's going to stand out compared to everyone else. They're going to click it. What if your first opener is like, I am so sorry. I just had to get your attention. I pro, you know, it's like, it could be that simple. You know, <laughs> hey, Dr. John, I'm standing outside your house now. <laughs> that's, that's, that's hilarious. No, don't put IRS. That's too much. George, George said IRS and then your name. That's, I think you're going to get people to pissed off. I like the subject line. Wake up, Dr. John. That's a good one. The point is you guys need to find a way to innovate in some way. And all of you guys are capable. You're just not thinking about it. And I think I want to give you guys the permission to do so. That's it. I, I, I know some of you guys might think I need to copy and paste Joel's scripts to get the desired outcome, but it's quite the opposite. You need to learn how to, what I'm, you need to learn how to be unique and stand out. Cool. Um, Yo, can I just add on to what you just said? Please, Idris, hop in. Yeah. So a lot of you guys are, what Joel, Joel's talking about is you're, you're closing your eyes and you're copy and pasting Joel's email thinking it's like some secret sauce, but you have to figure out why he's doing what he's doing and the amount of volume that it takes to achieve the desired results. You know, there was another guy posting and saying, Hey man, I did 200 cold calls. I haven't gotten any clients. And I was like, brother, I was doing 500 cold calls a day. So be very clear on why we're teaching you what to do and then figuring out the amount of volume that it takes to get there because or else you're very you're going to be miscalculated and then you're going to end up being frustrated so just be clear on that and you'll be good i was muted someone said joel can you do some scripts for cold calls i would ask you to do some scripts for, for cold calls it's like what think just spend 30 minutes today and really ask yourself okay here's my script what can i say what words can come out of my mouth to stand out like I, you guys have all heard the, this is a cold call. It'll only take 30 seconds. If you hate me, you know, I'll never call back. What if you say, Hey, uh, Hey, Dr. John. Yeah. Hey, Dr. John. It's uh Joel Kaplan with uh Atlas digital. This is a cold call. If you give me about one minute and you hate what I've got to say, I'll send you a hundred bucks right now. That's how confident I am that we could uh, help you out. That could be a great opener. It's just one little tweak, you know? Um, can I ask about Josh? What's up? 
Uh, hey, so, so um, I was in the construction uh, niche, and the problem with this niche is that they have a high ticket job. So uh, the sales cycle, first of all, is long. And uh, on top of it, uh, there are external factors like the company's reputation um, and uh, homeowners hoping for uh, the cheapest guys because these are projects that might take like 25 to 100 grand. So I was thinking at this stage, you know, uh, kind of pivoting to a niche that doesn't require my clients to have a same skills, you know, somewhere that's above 500 and less than uh, two, three grand, you know. So uh, could you like recommend a niche that isn't like, you know, that does, that doesn't require, that is like, not like dental kairos, uh, any niche that you found, you know, that doesn't require my client to have that high end sales skills, you know, and the, and the sales window is also short. Um, mm, the short answer is none. I think you're asking the, the wrong question, my friend. It's like, how do I, and then I, then I want to get back to the, the prospecting stuff, but I think you're asking the wrong question. You're asking what niche is easy. And it's like, I just, every niche needs to be good at sales. You can do harder things like SEO or PPC, but then your clients are going to be like, why am I not getting more leads? So it's like, no matter what yeah, path you yeah. choose, it's going to be hard. It's like every business model has its pros and cons. You can, you guys can be successful at any niche, really. You guys can go into an untapped niche and figure it out. You can go into a tap niche and figure it out. It's all going to carry its own set of problems. And it's about figuring out which set of problems you prefer to deal with. So it's like, okay, do you want your clients to be worse at sales and still get results. Cool. Let's do things like PPC or uh, like Google ads or SEO, but then that's going to require you to play a much more competitive game and also be dependent on the amount of volume that there is in a given area. So for example, let's say that you are in the middle of nowhere and you're a chiropractor. There's not that many people searching for chiropractors. So it's like, are those higher intent leads? Sure. But they're, they're probably already ranking on Google for number one, because there's not a lot of traffic. Um, so, uh, I think anyone that's thinking, how do I make it easier is, is asking the wrong question. Um, I think it's a, a better question is which is the worst, what are the bad things that I'm willing to deal with that I feel like I'm most mm. prepared to deal with do this training in hyper speed. Does that sound good with you guys? I'm going to do a 10 minute training. So I want to teach you guys how to get in the door with these businesses by leading with value. Cause a lot of you guys feel like, um, a lot of you guys feel like, oh, I don't know how to get results. I'm not sure if I can get results. I don't know if I can do this, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to just show you exactly how you guys can go out and start getting results for people right now. Um, even if you're like, Joel, I have no idea what I'm doing. And it'll help you get your foot in the door. Now, I, I gave this away for free, but I wanted to break it down just for you guys here. Um, this two-page cheat sheet. So for me, this is the easiest way to land your first client and get them amazing results without being salesy. And even if you have zero experience. So the first things first, you got to go on Google and type in a niche and a city. Guys, someone type in a, a city and a niche, city and a niche, type it below. I'm going to show you guys live. Okay. Jim's Seattle. Cool. Jim's Seattle. All right. Look at the website. It's okay. Let's see, this one's better. I'm trying to find one that has a really bad website. This one's pretty good. Now we'll just go with the first one. Let's go with this one. All right. You'd be like, hi, name. So let's see. Hey, uh, what's this place called? Seattle Gym. Came across your website on Google and found a few ways that you can really improve the design. We could also add a chat bot. I'll help Joel out by going to Seattle Gym and be like, hey, you know, this guy named Joel, he's Really good guy. He's really good at business and marketing. Anyways, it's not like he would drop an email to you. So let's talk about to build out your... Uh, uh, oh. Okay, there's the script. Hi, team at Seattle Gym. Came across your website on Google and found a few ways that we can really improve the design. We can all, we could also add an ad chatbot um, and install all of the pixels so you can retarget... Add pixels so you can retarget people who visit your site. I'd be happy to get you guys a new website template and install the chat bot and your pixel at no cost. This is a way to give back and build up my marketing agency portfolio. Reply back if you're interested and I can get this set up for you. Then you could just literally just go high level for all of these things. So boom, submit, done. So I think the key thing here, a lot of these have good websites because I think, uh, well, this one kind of sucks. 
And again, you can have a VA do this. I think the point is, guys, find ways to lead with value, right? You can offer the Google review campaign that we te- that we teach you guys. You can install like the chat bot through Go High Level. You can give them a new website template through Go High Level. Uh, you can install their Facebook pixel. Literally, it doesn't um, matter. And let me show you guys. All right, this one has 3.9 reviews. And you could be like, hey, I noticed on your... Here, let's just do it right now. Hi, name I noticed... Hey guys, uh, I noticed on your Google My Business listing that you uh, had reviews as low as 3.9. This might be hurting your search results on Google, therefore getting less members. Be happy to give you access to our Google review software to help you out at no cost. So it would be um, go high level just as a way to give back and build up my marketing agency portfolio. Um, reply back if you're interested in that, can get this set up for you. And you guys should run the Google review campaign from uh, Agency Lab through Go High Level. And I think the key thing here is you're leading with value. And if you do this enough times for enough people, what's going to happen is they're going to ask you, well, what else can you do for us? So if you guys are just starting out, you're not sure, you don't want to start pitching, you want, you don't want to do complicated offers like performance-based things like that, um, what you could do is take any of the uh, pieces that we've taught you. So let me actually write this out. You could install the Facebook, TikTok, and Google Pixel. You can run a Google review campaign. You can get them a new website template. You can um, make one short form video for them. You can, let's see, run a Google review campaign, new website template. You can make a chatbot for their website. You can add a scheduling system to their website. You could literally be like, I'm going to install, you could literally install Calendly for all I care. It doesn't even have to be go high level. You could literally install Calendly to their website and be like, hey, I noticed you guys don't have a way for people to schedule. Like, um, let's see, uh, wedding. You know, my family runs a wedding venue and it's like people couldn't re- book a time to go tour the venue. So it's like, let's see. Okay, this one has it. Sweet. A lot of people don't have this. So you would obviously skip. Perfect. You can't schedule a tour. So it's like, hey, we'd love to schedule a calendar for, you know, I noticed you didn't have a scheduler where people can literally book in a time to go see you or a dentist or a doctor or even like a time for you to get a call back. So you can easily just lead with value and do any of these quick things that require you about 20 to 30 minutes and will really separate you from everyone else. So what's going to happen is if you do this for even 100 people, let's say that 25, one out of four ask you, what else can you do for us? So 25% ask, what else can you do for us? Now you have... 25 calls with people that are interested in what else you could do to help them. This does not require you to be bait and switch. It does not require you to be salesy. It allows you to lead with value. And I know you guys all follow Hermosi. He's been saying lead with free. I don't want you guys to create a free resource for people because you don't have the domain expertise yet. Like you're not going to make a free course for dentists. Like they're, they're not going to consume it because they, they would need to feel like it's valuable. But if you can lead with any of these other services, it takes the same psychology and applies it for this business model. So you guys lead in with, um, you guys could also copy and paste it and just say, I noticed your website didn't have a, a lot of Google reviews and just re- send this out as a mass blast. You don't even have to personalize it. So someone asked, what's the difference between this normal cold emails with custom values? No, you could absolutely just do this as a mass blast and just send it to everyone. But now instead of leading with a, uh, hey, do you want new patients? It's like, hey, I noticed that your website didn't have these three things. Let me install it for you. Lead with value. And then let's talk about how I can help you. No, I don't. I, I think the 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 free course route, you'd have to be someone, you know, Don asked if we have the expertise, would you recommend the free course route? The free course is only valuable if you're the uh, based on who the person is and if people already know, like, and trust you. So I, th- I think that there's uh, f- there's other, like, for example, I have the niche calculator, right? I made that niche calculator. I could give that away for free. That's 
if, if I was done in your shoes, I'd probably come up with like a little tool or something that I can give away for free that, um, yeah, that, that doesn't require a huge investment of time from someone. Yeah. The, the only downside with a free course is that you're ask you're actually asking for someone's time. So for example, if I ask a dentist for their time, it has to be very valuable It has you know, even if it's free, it has to be worth it. So, um, I want to know, I don't know if I'd make a list of AI tools. I would literally be like, Hey, I'll install these three. A- I'll install this AI tool on your website. Hey, I notice you guys aren't leveraging AI, um, on your website. I'd love to install this AI tool that takes care of all the conversations as soon as someone hops on the call and we'll train the chat bot. Like you guys can use that as a way in the door. So you're not building an AI agency. I actually don't want you to charge for that. I think that that is a very hard business model because once it's done, it's done. But I think what you guys can do is use it as a lead magnet to get in the door, to lead with value. And then you're going to be like, uh, you're going to stand out from everyone else. You could even shit on the agencies. So you could be like, you could even be like, hey, name, I know all of the other agencies out there just pitch and have these crazy guarantees. Like you can literally just shit on throw rocks at everyone else. Um, so I would love to just lead with value and help you out. I noticed on your Google, my business listing that you didn't have that many reviews. I'd be happy to give you extra Google review software to help you out. No cost, just as a way to give back and build up my marketing agency portfolio. Reply back if you're interested and I can get the setup for you. So you guys can essentially stand out and not have to pitch so hard right out, right out of the gate. And if you guys feel more comfortable with doing this, um, it can really, really help you build confidence because you'll be like, oh shit, it's not that scary to talk to prospects. It's not that, um, you know, they're going to want my help. It's not that hard to actually add value. Cool. Is this uh, clicking for you guys? And I I wouldn't, uh, for, for most of you, I wouldn't give away a piece of information again that they have to consume. I would do a mini service. It's a Trojan horse strategy. We're, we're essentially sneaking our way in the door. It's the Trojan horse strategy. So, and I would pick a service that takes less than 30 minutes for you guys to do. So like installing the pixels for retargeting, running a Google review campaign, getting them a new website template, making one short form video for them, making a chat bot for their website, add a scheduling system to their website, like guys, there's plenty of videos on YouTube that teach you how to do the AI chatbots. Again, I do not think that you guys should be ever selling that as a service. I think it's very hard. Um, that being said, you could say, "Hey, look, hey doc, I noticed, you know, I noticed that you guys didn't have any um, chatbots on your website. I've actually custom coded an AI chatbot just for chiropractors. Um, I'd be happy to install it on your website at no cost." And once you guys have that built out, it's very simple. It's very easy. So like it doesn't require a lot of time to reinstall it. Yeah, you could. Uh, no, no, you're not. Sell- no, someone said we can even sell the. Yeah, yeah you don't want to sell the, anything. This is just a way to get your foot in the door and then have the relationship. Because think about it, guys. If you have 100 relationships with people in your niche. So I know, the, for example, that student that was that posted yesterday and said they were struggling, they're in the Cairo niche. But if they had a hundred solid relationships with Cairo's in their niche where they added value and that person has a hundred chiropractors that respect her, you're already going to stand out compared to everyone else. So yeah, you can absolutely do the GHL chat widget. That's perfect. Doesn't, it doesn't have to be so complicated. Hey Joe, can you drop that document link in the the chat? I'll just start using it right away. I thought there were some good ideas there. Thanks. Yeah, this is more so for every, anyone that doesn't like the leading with a crazy offer and just wants to lead with value. It's just a really good way for you to get in the door and start to build relationships without being salesy. And if you're like, Joel, I just want to hammer anyone that p- replies positively and close them fine, then go with a strategy that uh, is more aligned with that. But if you guys are like, Joel, you know, I, I've been hesitant. I'm not sure. Um, If I can deliver, you can start with these very easy, quick wins, because what's going to happen is all of these are easy to execute on. They're not complex. Hey, Joel, can I ask a quick question? Yeah, of course. Um, So with the 10 free patients, um, are we doing like reactivation campaign or are we doing ads in order to get those 10 clients? Uh, That was based on the offer that um, 
uh, Idris created last week for us. But again, don't look at it so... I don't want you to copy and paste to be like, that's what I need to do. That's that's not the... I would modify it for whatever you offer and however you feel like that's the that's your offer. You know, So the, the takeaway is not copy and paste that script and use that exact offer. It's more so set it up in the way that you... Um, set it up in the way that you feel like would make the most sense for you. The, the, the real takeaway was how I was innovating the whole script. Now, as far as the leading with a 10 patients route, if I, if it was me, I would say, look, you cover the ad spend and I get paid a thousand dollars per patient that I bring you. So if you got that closes, so you guys can get a one person to close a month for an implant case, which is like 30,000, you get paid a thousand. If you get them five, you get paid 5,000 but they cover all the ad spend. That's how I would do that offer. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to understand the different approaches of, you know, providing those leads that way, even innovating on it, you know, could help if, you know, there was an understanding of what are the different ways yeah. that people have tried. I, I would, I would, I would tell the dentist, look, you can either pay me a thousand dollars per patient that I bring you um, and you're covering all the ad spend or, you pay me fifteen hundred dollars a month flat, and I do the same service for you. Gotcha. So it's like Thank you. it's like, look, if I get you two, I'm already making more, but it's less risk to you, right? So so it's it's that's that's how it's structured that deal. And I would also say that one is more for beginners who are just starting out, who just want to um, get some experience, because no matter what, you're walking away with experience on that one. But again, you're at, it, it, with that offer you're making, um, with that offer, you're making your, your, your service, the foot in the door offer, which is harder to transition. Cause you're essentially saying, Hey, let's go from ads to pay me for ads. That's why like free trials for ads is hard to convert. If you're going, Hey, let's go from free to not free. And they would have had to see so much value. It's easier to go from like something that's free like a Google review campaign where the, you build trust, you get them good results. And they're like, well, what else can you do for us? And then you sell them on ads. Anyone tried messenger ads uh, to go high level AI chat bots, book appointments for your clients as well as your agency. I wouldn't recommend that. It's easier to just get people on the phone, make it simpler, not harder um, or, or not more complicated. I think the AI chat bot is just a, it's just a, again, it's like a cool way to get in the door. I just, I, but if, if, you know, me and Faisal, I know you're on here. Get the number and call them and have a real conversation. Don't don't try to automate it. Less automated. You, you, they're human. Like what when you're talking to your clients, they're human. They don't want to, they don't want to go through this automation. When you're talking to the, your clients' clients, they're also human. They don't want to go through this crazy automation that Go High Level is gonna book them all on its own. Cool. Then your show up rate's gonna suck. And then your client's gonna be like, oh, these this, these leads suck. Joel, can I share something real quick, real quick? Sure. Yeah. So one of my clients, right. He actually told me, he was like, yo, dude, I like our conversation so much that I feel like you and I are like friends and not so much business partners. And he said, we're going to stay together for like the next like two years or so. Cause I see you more as a friend than like a marketer, just because I developed that relationship in the beginning or I developed that rapport in the beginning. Beja raised him up. Absolutely, man. I think that's the key. So I, I think I, I wouldn't do that, honestly, the messenger ads to go high level AI chatbot. I would, if anything, you could do messenger ads to get a phone number and call them and then have a real conversation. Um, let's see. Yeah. First line writer, which is good. Uh, Drop the link already. Hey, Joel, I've hired a VA to do outreach for me. He's doing cold call, but no luck so far. Most of the time I would never have a VA. Like if you're going to cold call, you need uh, an amazing sales professional to cold call like Idris, who is a beast at sales was cold calling 500 people a day. I think to just outsource it to a VA is pretty much, I've never heard that working. I don't think even if you're, I don't think that's going to work. Um, I, 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 I would, I would, I, I, it's, it's already hard enough to, to get a fluent English speaking sales professional. That's a beast to cold call. That's already hard enough. Like the best of the best. Let's see, yeah. RJ said we starting. We're starting by, or RJ said we start. You already did this, RJ, or you're doing this. So our show up rates have been really bad. So we've been just like we're now running ads starting Monday 
for just like, hey, we're just going to build you a whole website if you show up to the call for us. And it's just like already a go high level template. And we're just changing pictures and colors and then give them. And then we're starting the call with like the website in the background and stuff like that. And just building that trust too. I love that, man. Yeah, I think that's powerful. You could send that cold email about the website templates and just run that up. Um, To get Calendly on their website, you just get the Calendly embed code and put it on their page. Yeah, it's very simple. Maybe it'll take you, any of these things that I gave you guys the first time, it'll take you maybe about two hours to figure out. And then after that, you'll be able to do each one in about 15 minutes. Um, I don't know if I rec guys, for most of you guys, I don't recommend cold calling. I think that cold calling is great to build confidence, but not to get clients. I'm going to say that again. Cold calling is great to build confidence and to, to learn how to deal with rejection, but it's just a very inefficient way to get clients. There's tools that you could use to email, cold email every single chiropractor in the nation within a day. I'd rather you guys do that and then call anyone who responds. I think it's a, just much more efficient. Um, for the Google review campaign, is it best to send the emails through my go high level account or to use an existing email software that the client already has either way works, but if they already have an email software that's warmed up, ready to go, you could literally just use that and just implement your templates. And they're going to be like, Holy shit, this works. Yeah. Don said, played around with AI chatbot offer just out of curiosity, hundred percent difficult to get business owners to see high value in a chatbot growing their business, especially moving forward. Cause it's just a one and done. Um, so I think like best case scenario, you get to charge high ticket one time and then, maybe 49 bucks a month, which is just not a lot to, to maintain it. I, I, I would rather you guys, again, P, uh, and then someone else said they were like, cool, this is cool, but I don't need it. Um, unless you're pretty much an e-com, it's, it's not going to make them a lot of money. So what I would do is you could use that just as a way to get in the door because it is cool. So um, you could even send out a five minute, a three minute loom video breaking down how it works and be like, if you'd like me to install it, just let me know and we can hop on a call. And now you're getting on calls with all these people in your niche where they are seeing you as the authority and you just do it for free. But now you're in the door. That's the key. Now you're in the door. And you could even say, Hey, um, once you're done, I'd love to share some of the other things that we could do for you. If you're open to it, they're all going to be open to hearing more. Let's see. Cool. Cool. I'm going over the questions in the chat first. Um, hey, Joel, I just want to uh, add, because I saw the uh, last interview you did on YouTube, and I took action on sending a personalized video on the DMs uh, showing a, a GHL template website with the logo of the prospect that I'm actually texting and just showing them how it will work for them. And then I will send them a, a short text message that will be for free because I'm start, I'm a brand new agency and I just want to be able to do grow together or something like that between those words. So, so you're took, you're doing this? Yes, I took action on that today. So we'll see on the answer. I haven't got an answer yet, but I'm That's taking awesome. action on that. Did I share the link to the cold email copy? Let me grab it for you guys. Good question. You guys like those cold emails, huh? They're kind of crazy, but you guys came up with some crazier cold emails. For sure. All right, let's see. Is it this one? No, I think it's this one. Cool. Let's see. Now I lost the queue. Okay. Uh, cold email copy, Sarah. I just dropped it below. What's a good way to create pain to a real estate agent that is already having good results? Um, it's a good question. I would always. You can always future pace. You can be like, hey, so you you're you know you're crushing it. What do you believe the next few biggest challenges are going to be as you continue to grow your business? So for example, if they're like, yeah, I think hiring and then be like, okay, well, if you can solve that problem, what other problem is that going to create? Uh, but if, if someone is in a really excited place, they feel like they're crushing it and their their ego is really high from feeling like everything is just going very well, it's hard to get people into a state of pain. You're going to have to kind of really dig deep. Um, but again, I think future pacing. Well, Right now, you know, you're crushing, you're getting a lot of leads. Like, what do you see, you know, looking into the future? What do you think would be like the next big challenge that that's going to create? Oh, we're going to have to hire people or blah, 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 or my time's going to get sucked in. Yeah. And do you feel like once you solve that problem, let's say that we're able to, you're able to get a team in place. What, 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 what other challenges do you feel like are going to present themselves as you continue to scale? Um, someone said, how do you hold the clients accountable for ringing leads? Do you always have them? to, uh, to get them to record or, um, okay. So the way that I did it, I actually did not have a call center and I had all of my clients calling 
here's what I did. I'll just give you guys a full breakdown. Let me pull up a Google Doc. So first things first, I made it mandatory to call leads to qualify for the guarantee. It's number one. Number two, I assigned the, well, I worked with the doctor to pick one person on their team who would be in charge of calling the leads. We also uh, helped them with texting the leads through Go High Level to essentially schedule, we wouldn't schedule appointments, we would schedule a time for the front desk staff to call. So what you guys could do is you guys could literally have VAs that are texting these people through Go High Level to find a time for the front desk staff to call. That is much more manageable. It's like, cool, we'll call you at this time tomorrow to get you scheduled. Perfect. Um, and then uh, we set hardcore expectations. So we set expectations on the launch call. We had them sign an expectations agreement. We gave them a course. We gave them weekly coaching. But we made it so that they had to take ownership rather than us taking ownership for them. And we also incentivized them. So we had the doctors pay out $5 bonus for every prepaid appointment to their staff. So we told them like, hey, if you book 10 of these a day, you're making an extra $50 a day. If you book five of these, you know, you're making an extra 25 a day, which for those people that are working hourly, that's like an extra hour of work just for doing the work that they're already doing. So that definitely helped a lot. If you're going to build a call center, um, how do you hold clients accountable for any leads, et cetera? Do you always have yeah, if you're going to do it yourself, it's 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 a big project to take on for sure. Yeah, I'm not I'm not even to build a call center or anything. I'm just trying to figure out how to make it a, a better process, but that helps a lot. So. Yeah, I just had financial incentives for them. I, uh, I had consequences. So for example, if you don't call, you don't qualify for the guarantee. And I set really good expectations. And then I had a lot of support. Those are probably the big four. Sweet. Cheers, Joel. No problem. Xavier said, how do you sell free trials with cold emails for roofers? I kind of gave you guys quite a bit of ways that you guys could do that uh, today. So I would model some of the cold email templates and then innovate on them. Um, let's see. Amir said, I'm here from the 1% Masterclass. Can I ask something about Agency Lab? I would just uh, drop your question in the chat. Um, Kushi said, what would be the best investment? Paid ads instantly or go high level for a beginner having a budget crunch? Good question. You know, I'll tell you what Tanner Lewis did. Tanner Lewis did uh, Uber Eats and DoorDash, and he made at least 20 bucks a day for paid ads. Um, man, that's a tricky one. Personally, I would rather, this is going to be a maybe, I would probably rather, if you can save up 20 bucks a day from like another job, I would rather you put that into paid ads. It's going to force you to play the right game of how to grow an agency more quickly. Like no one ever got to, or very few people ever get to seven figures in the in this space without paid ads. So it's going to force you to figure it out with more pressure uh, more quickly. If you don't have any money, I would literally just do what I showed you today. Joe said, I'm running four subject lines. What's a good test size? And I want to start running it paid ads, but I'm having trouble scraping my niche. Um, I think if you guys have sent out 5,000 cold emails, that's enough of a data size. And if it's not really working... There's, there's room for improvement there. Raul said, I'm booking like 10 demos in two hours from cold calling. That's awesome. I think uh, you're probably very good at cold calling. I assume so. Yeah, I'm like, I'm decent. But the biggest thing I found is like how you get leads in for the cold calling, like your process for cold calling. So I have like a power dialer. I also like scrape a ton of leads from pretty much like local lead sniper from Google Maps. Then I run them through like a mobile number verifier. I'm doing like carpet cleaners. So all the mobile numbers are like going direct to business owners. And then you're calling like 10 at a time. So like you just run through and like they're always picking up. Um, and then you just have a good offer. Like you just like get really good at the first few lines and just book them, um, give them like something that they want. And it works really well. Do you think that would work with dentists? Probably not. I don't know much, but like with with gatekeepers cold calling is like really difficult i know a lot of people like complain about that so depends yeah on the niche. yeah yeah exactly that's what i was trying to get at like i think it also just depends on the niche yeah um 100%. you also seem very well spoken and dialed in on the process so yeah um, i also like cold calling so it also just depends on like what you're good at 
I know it's kind of weird, but like I, I like getting good at like just because it's hard. Like you're gonna learn more from doing it, and it just happens to work well for me. So like it's just like a win-win. Yeah, I think that uh, you know Cameron Springer. He's one of my very good friends. He went through Agency Lab, scaled to seven figures, all hundred percent through cold calling. But he's also kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, you know, kinda, it's like you can't really yeah. be a normal guy and be like, I'm gonna wake up today really excited to dial. It's just, <laughs> it's not a bad thing. I just, it's not a bad thing at all. I think most people are yeah. like, dude, I have to put myself on social media every day. It's like not yeah. a normal thing for people to do and like really put myself out there. It's just, I mean, yeah. it's not like it you're works excited. It works for you, but, but I think that yeah. it is hard, you know, for most people it's brutal. Yeah, it is brutal. Like, it's not like I'm excited. I just like, I don't know, like in my mind, like the better you get at doing things that are really hard, like the be- the more you're going to achieve. So like, if you make that connection, it's like, it sucks. But like, it's also kind of like satisfying in a way. It's weird. I don't know. That's how it works for me. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. Carlos said one more question. What do you think about having a bilingual, bilingual campaign? I think it's a great idea. I think there's a lot of opportunity in Spanish speaking markets. Like my brother and I are building his entire law firm off of the Hispanic you know, the Spanish speaking population. So it's a good, it's a good niche for sure. Uh, This person said, what do I do if a client doesn't want to share their customer details with us? Then you can't run the campaign. It's like, then they can't run it. You know, Um, you could maybe have other offers that you could say, well, if you don't feel comfortable with that one, we could do this for you. Um, Can you still do reactivation text campaign since A2P has been implemented on Go High Level? I mean, if you if it's verified, then yes. But if not, I I did all the Google review campaigns, guys, through emails, not through text blast. I did all the uh, I know on the scripts for the Google review campaigns they have text templates. But m- when I was starting out, I used that campaign just through um, just through email blast. This love said, "Is there a way to connect Facebook lead forms to high level by using Zapier?" Yes, but I'm not a, I'm not like the tech guy, so I'm I'm not gonna I'm. I'm not going to know the specifics, but I know for a fact you can do that. Um, cool, guys. I think that's it. Um, hopefully, you guys found some value. I wanted to stay on longer for you guys and, and over-deliver today just because I was a little late. I think we ended up doing more than an hour, though, so that's really, really solid. I know I was like 15 minutes late, um, but we got an hour and 15 done. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So, guys, good job. Thank Appreciate you. you all. Let's crush cool. it. Can, and, I, can uh, I just ask, ask a question? I know you're like one time. If not, it's okay to have like a minute. No, I like that. I like how you gave me the opt out. Go for it. Yeah, thank you. So basically, we had a call like pretty much a month ago, and I just started and stuff. And now I got a client for telemedicine semaglutides, and he wants to pay me a three point five k a month and do seven point five k on ad spend. But the thing is, basically, he wants me to get him one hundred appointments with that ad spend the 7.5k in a month and he wants to uh to basically advertise to the florida state and the new york state and in florida he wants to do to the spanish market and i i don't know what to do like he wanted to give me the money and i passed on it because i didn't know what to do basically and i have another call with him on monday just like i don't know what do you think Uh like i i'm i'm getting better at selling but i i don't know to deliver and he's like big at the industry so i i didn't accept the money so i didn't get burned but i don't know if it was the right move that's why i'm asking you basically um I'm trying to think how what what's the underlying what's your fear here to, to deliver to him uh because like i want to invest uh, for that much and for those many patients i think i gotta invest in a team and if things don't go well like i have to get it to work with a uh, frame for free or whatever and I don't want to just like run out of money. Why don't you just tell them, hey, pay me fifteen hundred a month, and we'll do a beta. Let's just do a test and slowly scale up, and let's just do, uh, you know, twenty five hundred in ad spend. Twenty five hundred, like, yeah, but yeah, he wants. I tried to do something kind of similar, similar, but he wants the one hundred patients, like fifty on the state of Florida and 50 on New York. And I, I don't know how like advertising for telemedicine goes, basically. I have no clue. If you're really hesitant, you have a few options. You can offer a test drive. You can say, look, I'll pay me the money. I can't refund the ad spend, but if it doesn't work, I can refund my fee. 
and you can actually do like a 30 day, you know, money back guarantee. Um, you can say to him, Hey, let's just start out with a thousand dollars as a trial and see how that goes. And once we're a hundred percent sure I can get this for you, then you pay me. There's a few ways that you can do this for you to feel really comfortable. And do you think like it's possible with the 7.5 K to get 100 patients to him uh, being something that's so specific, like telemedicine, semaglutide? I think it is. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Appreciate appointments. This. Yeah. Paying patients. No appointments. Yes. Yeah. It's booked appointments. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. All right, All right guys. I really, I really have to run. Appreciate you guys. Have a good, uh, weekend. I'll see you guys on, uh, on Friday. Much love. And let's crush it guys. At the end of the day, let's go close some fucking deals. All right. Joel, sorry. Can I just ask something about agency lab? Guys, you're, you're, I, I feel bad <laughs> saying no. <laughs> I feel bad. Go for it. Go for it. I feel bad. I just, Naomi is going to fucking murder me because I'm late to our meeting. Yeah, man. It's very quick. I mean, I finally just, uh, you guys know Naomi. She's operations on time, organized. So she's going to kill me. Yeah, go for it. And now I got to get Anas too because he's next. <laughs> it's, I got you. I'll, last two. Okay. Really fast. Yeah, I appreciate it, bro. Uh, I just want to know that uh, for someone who's starting from zero, who was not, I mean, just started a month ago, I haven't still chosen a niche. I want to know if you say that it's better to pay you the 10K, so you would choose me, my offer and my niche, or it's better to just pay the normal 6K for the agency lab and just spend that 4K for hiring VA and starting strong with pay that. From oh the, man, it's, it depends on your financial situation. I, you know, I mean, I have and the I, and, I, and I and I think it's, it's how I'm spending it. Right? It depends, you, man. How it depends on a lot of things. I think like you're you're, and I don't know if that this is a long conversation. I don't know if this is like a quick. I can give you an answer. Like, look, I'll tell you what. If whenever if I have the money and I want to solve a problem, I'm willing to pay as much as I need to. But at the same time, like that's where i'm at right now so um i think that um i mean i got so the thing I, I just want to know if you think it's better to just spend the 4k on ads or just pay 10 and like do you think that i think you should i think you should i think you should i don't want to rush through that ads. man it's you're, you're asking me to make a, a, a decision for you that i think is your decision and i think also i think you should talk to my team and and really work through it with them You know, it's, it's, it's too fast for me to answer it really quickly before I go. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Makes sense. It's like asking me, Hey, should I marry this person? I don't know. I have to get to know you guys. It's like, Hey, is this a good girlfriend for me? I don't know. <laughs> like I got to get to know you guys. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get to, I, I it's too quick. You know, yeah, like, I, I think I, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll, I think no matter what you choose, I think you won't, I, I know for a fact you won't go wrong. I know for a fact we're going to over deliver for you. And I think there's value with, with both options. It just more so depends on you, your risk tolerance, how confident you are, um, you know, all that good stuff. All right.